We're going to talk about a very serious subject today. It's very important to know that it's not a one size fits all. I can't give you the answer in a box and have it fix your problems because it doesn't work that way. We have been so dry this year. We are getting more hay than last year, which is really good, but we're still well below our water levels that we need and rainfall and our hay crop just across our, our area here. Um, all of the ranchers and farmers are down. And all of that means that I have been feeding my goats hay because the grass in the our, hay, our field out here that they go out to is they've eaten it all and it is really short. So I've been feeding them hay, but they still have been going out and munching here and there. So the grass is short. It has been really dry and hot, which does kill off eggs and worms. But then we got about an inch of rain and after that rain, my goodness, uh, the goats really started showing some dumps. The most important lesson when it comes to treating your goats for worms is that you need to treat for the specific worm that your goats have. Like I said, it's not a one size fits all. So you need to do a fecal on your goat either by collecting their poop and taking it to the vet to have them look at it or to take your goat's poop inside or wherever you have your microscope and do a fecal yourself. It is really important. That is a very important step. That way, when you look at the type of eggs that are in the poop, you'll be able to identify what you're dealing with and you can treat specifically for that type of worm. It's also important to note that you're not gonna be able to dif differentiate between eggs that are either a brown stomach worm or a barber pole worm. And that is really important to note. You can tell once they've hatched, but when they're in the egg state, you won't be able to tell the difference. And so you, you can use, if it's a barber pole worm, you can use other techniques to decide if that's what you're dealing with. And, and you, you know, if they have anemia, if their eyelids are really pale. So that's just something to be aware of. This little girl here is called Evie, but you can see here she's got some problems. So this is a tapeworm. If you've got a tapeworm hanging out of your butt, that's really gross. It's really gross. You shouldn't have that. Yeah. This one, she went to the fair with us, didn't you? You did so good. Yes, you did. So Oakum here yesterday had uh, segments of a tapeworm um, after she had pooped. So that was something that I noticed yesterday. So it wasn't as blown a full tapeworm um, as Evie, but she had little segments. So she definitely needs wormed. Um, but I am gonna get some a fecal done on these. Um, I have a feeling just based on the past that there'll be some brown stomach worm as well and and these tapeworms at least um so that's that's just what i want to check to double sure just to make sure of what we're we're dealing with and so you can see here this is a uh, some abnormal poop here when you see them all strung together and hooked together like that as well that'll be a sign that there's probably some problems there so it's just you know one one clump there this little one here, you can see she's got a tapeworm segment. And this is what we got here from her. So I'll take this in, we'll do a fecal on it. It'll tell us basically what we're dealing with all of them and we'll worm. All right, so I'm inside. I have everything ready to go to do my fecal and 
here we go. It's time to do this. <laughs> Maybe not the most pleasant job in the world, but when you own goats, it's a really important job. So if you've never done a fecal before, it's time to learn. It's really not that hard, and I will be using this book here to guide me through everything that I'm doing as I'm going to be working towards warming my goats and getting them, them healthy and everything truly right inside of them. This is an important book. It has everything you need to effectively uh, warm your goats, treat them, take care of them, how much to give them, even how to do a fecal step by step on, on what to do to get this done. And I encourage you to pick up this book. It's in the link uh, below in the description or the posted comment and, and get this truly sent. This will be mailed to your home and you will have it on hand in that moment where you're trying to get this figured out. And, and just it will be your guide throughout all the years of owning goats where you don't have to fret and worry and search and Google and on and on uh, as, as you are raising your goats and they get worms. Truly, truly. Worms are the leading killer in goats. Over 80,000 goats in the United States die a year from parasites. It's serious. You don't want to be a part of that statistic. It's also important to know that my situation is very different from your situation. I live in the north and our growing cycle is three months and that halts for a majority of the year, the parasite life cycle, it really does slow down a lot because they're not able to continually be uh, on and going on and on and on. They're dormant for quite a bit of the year and that really does make a huge difference. If you're down south, you don't get that break and you need to be on top of this continually throughout the entire year. It's really, really important. It's kind of like... <laughs> My video that I did about goat shivering, we're in a completely different place. And shivering can be very, very serious. Uh, and you need to know when it is because it's really cold and negative 20 and a goat's shivering because it's actually really, really, really cold. Or if they're shivering because they're sick. We are all in uh, a different situation. And, and you just got to learn your situation. You need to learn your goats. You need to learn your property so that you can have a true handle on this. Another question that I get a lot is, well, what did you give? What do you give your goats? How much did you give? What did you give? And that is something I can't tell you. I'm not going to tell you what I'm giving my goats because, again, it's parasite specific. And there are also areas in the United States where certain uh, drugs and certain wormers are not effective anymore against worms. And you need to know that. You need to be talking to your vet, talking to other uh, goat owners in your area and realizing that just because this person said to use this, it may be different for you. And your worms may be... Your your goats may be dealing with different worms than what mine are dealing with right now. And so that will affect what you give as well. And and inside this book, that is something that, you, that you'll find that, you know, this brand name or active ingredient in this specific warmer is effective against these worms. And so you need to say, you need to do your fecal. You need to say, oh, okay, I am dealing with the brown stomach worm and or the barber pole worm or something or a tapeworm or whatever it is and then you'll look on here and you'll say okay I am going to use this and then you're also going to realize that you're gonna when you warm your goats you're gonna give them two types of warmers from a different class and you're gonna give them at the same time not in the same syringe but you're gonna give them at the same time and then you're gonna give them that same dosage same ingredients, same two vials uh, in there orally, and you're going to do that again 12 hours later, and then you're going to do it again 10 days later. And that is what will break that cycle. You'll get the, the ones that are alive now, and 10 days later, because of that life cycle, the eggs will have hatched. Then you'll get those ones 
and kill them before they are able to lay more eggs. And so that is really important. There are so many people that come to me and say, my goat has this problem. This is what's happening. What is the problem? They say, well, did you worm them? It sounds like they might have worms. And they'll respond with, no, I wormed my goats. It can't be that. <laughs> well, you need to make sure that what you what you gave was actually effective. You need to do this method and then after that do another fecal to make sure that the actual worms were killed, that there are no more eggs that are then going to hatch and then start the process over again. And so you can never say, oh, I wormed and, and just let that be a blanket response. You need to actually make sure that what you did was effective. And, and you'll also find in this book the, uh, the wormer options and the dosage. So I've chosen what I'm going to give and I can look on here and say, oh, I'm going to give one cc per 10 pounds or whatever it may be uh, based on what it is that you're giving. And, and so truly this is very important. There'll also be um, pictures on here of what it is as far as if you're seeing this type of egg in here, you'll be able to identify it. Like I said before, there, the brown stomach worm and the barber pole are really, really close. And you most likely won't be able to tell the difference until they actually hatch um, and, are, and you see the worm themselves. So just, um, you can, with the barber pole, because that's a blood sucking worm, a lot of times there's anemia and things that also go along with that, the bottle jaw and things that, that you can all say, well, based on all of the symptoms and what I found in the fecal, I assume it's the barber pole, you, things like that. So really, truly, um, this is important. You need to get, you need to just get on top of this and, and really learn it and learn it well. All right, I'm going to get this ready and I'm going to look at this poop. I have my fecal solution here. I'm going to put in, so in my little jar here, about 15 cc's is about half of this. I'm going to mush up this poop and get it all mushed up inside here. Okay, once it's mushed up, Okay, I'm going to add in now more. It's about 33 cc's. Now I keep all of these things here. These, like this spoon here and this little cup. I keep it all specifically for this. This is in my worming but my fecal box okay so i got one of these strainers it's a very 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 fine mesh again this is something that goes in my box with all of this stuff i don't use it anywhere else but i'm going to strain this now and that's going to get out all the debris you know that's something that can get in the way as you're looking through the microscope there's just when there's just a lot of debris in there from the hay or uh, the things that you picked up with it, um, just the fibers that are in there, maybe even hair fibers or pollen fibers, the things they've been eating, all of that. It will uh, get out as a, quite a bit of that so it's not in the way as you're looking for the eggs in there. So I'm going to strain this now. And you'll be able to see that there's quite a bit of Quite a bit of debris. Okay, I've gotten most of it. There's a lot of just, uh, just solidness in here. <laughs> um, so I'll set this aside. Okay, pretty gross, huh? Okay, I'll put the lid on this now. Okay, we're just going to rock this back and forth. Now, I have a McMaster slide here, and this is um, how you're going to count how many eggs are in, because it has all of these little lines in here, and you're going to count how many eggs are in each section. And in here, it gives the 
fecal egg count and then how to uh, multiply and figure that. It gives the equation in the book on how to figure that out. And I also suggest, because I have found with my microscope, it is harder to see. Uh, this is such thick plastic that just if you're wanting to learn and just kind of get familiar with the look looks of eggs and, and be able to see them a little clearly, I have other slides like this that I use as well. And I really think that this is, um, uh, it, you can see a little bit clearer. I personally think this anyway, um, just with the microscope that I have. Um, so that might be an option that if you're just wanting to really get a good look on uh, on your slides and figure things out and really just get familiar with it all, you can use that as well. Okay, so I can now see the entire, because on this McMaster slide, there's there's lines. There's a little square that has lines all the way up and down it. And I have it on the one where I can tell, I can see the entire between each line. And so I'm just going to go up and down and each one until I've completed that section and then I'll keep counting and I'll write down on each line so I need to get a piece of paper and a pen and on a little scratch piece of paper I'll write down each line which kind I found so you'll write down if you see coccidia you'll write down if you've seen a strongoloid you'll write down if you've seen like a tapeworm so write down the different kinds and just keep adding up all right so I got my scratch piece of paper <laughs> that's something you're just going to write down that you see a, a strong aisle. There's the tapeworm. That's kind of the, kind of like a triangle. And then there's the coccidia, which is round with a little round spot in the middle. So you could do something like that on your sheet, or you could draw the picture of them, the very rough, rough sketch of them. And, and as you go through each line, tally up how many or write down the number of how many you see for each line. Does that make sense? I hope that does. And again, inside here, you'll have the, I'd be able to see kind of the, the different kinds, a quick glance of what you're looking for. Um, and it also explains in here, which I think is really, really good, is how there is the most common type of worms. So that's the barber pole, the brown stomach worm, and the bankrupt worm. And that's what you'll see up top here in these pictures, these ones here, and they basically look the same. Uh, and so uh, those are the ones that you're not gonna be able to differentiate between. Um, all right, here we go, I'm gonna dive in. Okay. Get my situated. All right. Yeah. So there is a lot of tapeworm. Actually, in that first little uh, section there, that's all I saw was the tapeworm. So the tapeworms generally have kind of a triangle look to them. And, and that is that, and this is actually the one where uh, she had the uh, actual sections of tapeworm coming out of her. So... Uh, and I didn't see any of the others. I didn't see any what could be the brown stomach worm or something like that either. So uh, I'll, I'll keep counting on the next ones. But uh, that's pretty gross. Poor, poor girls are all filled with tapeworms. All right, I got through one square. Now I'm going to go to the other side because there's on the McMaster slide, there's two sections that you'll count on both of them. Um, and again, all I'm seeing, I am not seeing any other worm but the tapeworm. So, and like I said, you know, some people down south will be amazed to hear that this is the first time that I'll be worming this year. And that is not typical. So, you know, I really don't like living where it's so cold and the winters are so brutal. But that is one advantage. <laughs> That is one advantage, and I need to remember that. So remind me, when it is January, February, March, and it's still snowing and really cold, <laughs> remind me of that, okay? Don't let me forget. Yeah, it's a really high fecal egg count. <laughs> so they need to be wormed, and it's obvious. They, there was obvious worms, and sometimes that's not the case. 
Again, if you have a goat that is not doing well, that you think, oh, they're not, they're not as shiny as they should be, or they're not, they're just not as thrifty. Sometimes they get kind of that pot belly, just a weird look about them or something. Um, they might have a bottle jaw where they get a little bit of swelling. Again, be checking their eyes often. There's a lot of things that you need to be checking uh, all across their body from the top of their heads to the bottom of their feet <laughs> that you need to be checking. And so even if you don't see visible worms, and so I'm going to, next, I'm going to be checking uh, a goat's poop that didn't look abnormal, that, that they, like the one I just did. It was obvious there was problems and, and there's a really high fecal egg count and it's one of the kids. It's the young, you know, they were born this spring and sometimes they are more susceptible. Um, so I got another adult that just was normal looking poop and I'm going to check that as well and see what it looks like for her. And she is a couple years old. And so just know that there's always a lot of factors and you, when you do your fecal egg count, it's, it's important to check uh, and just go through the whole process so that you know what the fecal egg count is and what kind of eggs you're dealing with. And so I'm going to now do this whole process again with the other uh, goat's poop that look normal. It's also important to note that you, if you were to look at this goat's poop yesterday, today, tomorrow, and every day this week, you'll notice that there's a different, uh, there, there will be a different worm load in each sample um, because they are depositing worm loads and, and you know there's the cycle of the worms and on and on and so you might also notice that they look a little bit different because again those eggs are going through their own cycle of how they look differently and 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 going through that process as well as they turn into worms and hatch and everything so you'll you may find as well that is is if you were to do this of the same goat every day that it looks different each time and that might be something as you're learning this to just do if you have the time to do that do it so you can learn and and see the differences in all of this as well it's very fascinating honestly if you can get past the poop part <laughs> Something else that I think is really important to point out is that labs and your vet and you and your friend will all do this differently. And, and really, it's important that you figure out how you're going to do your fecal egg count so that each time you'll do it the same and that each time you can then, because you're doing it the same, you can really start to get true answers of what your goats are like because you'll find that some goats are are highly susceptible to worms and they are very affected by them and you'll notice that this other goat you know you've seen your own same herd in the same pasture in the same everything and they react very differently and are actually much stronger and, and more robust and don't let the worms and eggs affect them as much so you need to establish your routine and how you're going to be doing this and and get that settled so that you do it the same every time uh, like I said, so I'm going to now do the other goat. I have about eight or nine pills. Uh, they, they look like normal poop, and I'm going to see what we find with her. So i got to get them out of here in a little container. So you can see, they look normal here. That's why you can never assume that just diarrhea, a lot of times the diarrhea is an indicator that you can't assume that just because there um, isn't diarrhea that there isn't worms so it's always best to check so what i'm finding with hers is that there's not near as many eggs so far and so what i'm seeing is the tapeworm eggs when i do see an egg it is a tapeworm egg and i will try to get it on my phone to show you uh, what it looks like in just a second i'll get it for you you can see in this section here just how many are in there in just that one section those are all tapeworm eggs it's so this one here is a either brown stomach worm or the barber pole. So you can see the difference in how it looks, but all of those black dots, those really dark dots are actually air bubbles. And I don't know why so many got in there, but. So this here, you can see that there's the tapeworm egg 
That could be something like potentially pollen or something. You can see some of them here then coming in from the, the field. It is pretty short. It's pretty windy outside, so I just needed to say this inside because I think the wind would mask what I'm saying. Uh, the first thing I need to do before I warm them is weigh them. So I'm gonna use this, this lovely measure. I'm gonna measure their heart girth around right behind their front legs and out of my, my goat binder here. I'm gonna use that and on the goat weight page here, uh, there's, it shows different ways to weigh your goat and I'm gonna then find out how much they weigh and dose them accordingly. So let's weigh the goats. I waited till evening, so it's about seven o'clock. That means tomorrow morning about seven o'clock, I'm going to dose them again. Warming, just kind of pay attention to, to that so that you know when you gave it so you can know when to give it again. Don't need it. One cc yeah. per 10 pounds. Yeah. One cc yeah. per 10 pounds. Yeah. So with something like this, probably the best way to be accurate instead of using this dosage thing here, because this is made for horses, is to get it into something like this, however much you need, and, and get it inside here so you can measure it properly. All right, so I'm sat with my first goat here. So I have, these are two separate, different types of warmers, and they're in two separate containers. We're not gonna mix them. I'm just gonna give them each to the back of the throat, over the tongue, back of the throat, and it'll be good with that goat. What do you think? That's looking at you, huh? Okay, we're gonna get these in your mouth. Yeah. One more. One more. Oh, I know. This yeah. will help you feel better, though. Mm -hmm. This is a big one, I know. Oh. 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 Go get her down. Get her down. It'll make you feel better. Yes, it will. Oh. Now you're properly armed with all you need to know about warming your goats and taking care of them in that way, it's really important. And you will really extra, extra be prepared to take care of your goats and warming them when you add this, these as well to your goat resources. Essential, it's important, you gotta keep your goats healthy alive. So get these on your way if you don't have them already and keep those goats healthy and happy. Have a great day.